we're continuing our little project about retro movie reviews. We went all the way back to 1980 in the John Travolta classic, Urban Cowboy. Here again with my good friend Jacob Up. What's going on, buddy? Hey, guys. Today, uh, like I said, we watched Urban Cowboy, which is a 1980 romantic western directed by James Bridges. It's the story of the love-hate relationship between Bud, played by John Travolta, and Sissy, played by Deborah Winger, and captures the late 70s, early 80s popularity of country music. Uh, much of the action in the movie takes place around Gilly's Club, which is a football-sized honky-tonk bar in Pasadena, Texas. You know, the, the cast of this movie is actually really, really amazing. You have Travolta, who was just hitting his the brightness of his stardom yeah. in the early 80s. His All, yeah, his trajectory yeah. was way, going way up. Deborah, Deborah Winger, this is actually her first big movie. I was going to say, I don't think I've ever actually... Her yeah, she, th- this was her first main role. Yeah. And she obviously in the 80s had things like Officer and Gentleman, things like that, and a bunch of other okay. romantic comedy things and a bunch of other stuff before alcoholism kind of derailed her. Yeah. Guys like Barry Corbin, uh, just just a whole bunch of people that, that you'd probably seen. Scott Glenn, you know, we had talked yes. about as we were watching <laughs> the movie. He, he, he looked a little old and grizzled back then. He's probably 150 years old now, probably. but he's, he still he's brings thinking, it when yeah. he acts. He's still one hell of a guy to watch. But uh, give me, this is the first time you've seen the movie, right? Yeah. Yeah, give me some of your initial thoughts. Um, well, I, yeah, I mean, I wasn't uh, enthused about it when, uh, when it was brought up, but, um, and that was just because I didn't know what to expect. But uh, after watching it, yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was, it was a fun ride. There was, I mean, it never got boring. The pacing was good. Yeah. I do think the movie Kimmy was. Hooked. A, I think the movie was a bit long. I think they could have edited a few minutes there were a few out of it. Things, yeah, like some unnecessary scenes, I guess, or just dragged on. But yeah, they they, they could have cut a little bit out of the middle of this thing and made it clear, a, so. a smoother movie. Yeah, yeah, but but ultimately a good movie. One of my favorite movies. I used to watch this movie with my grandmother when I was a kid all the time. It was one of her favorite movies. Yeah. So it does hold a special place for me. I can understand why other people, especially the younger kids that are in their like you know twenties, probably would watch this and be like, oh, it's yeah. just some old movie before Travolta was cool. Yeah. And and I that get was... it, but yeah, <laughs> but but yeah, this is a really great movie. You know, one of the things I noticed about this movie is it's it's borderline musical at times. It's, the the music does play a lot. It's like a character. I yeah. know music in a movie is very important anyway because it helps it kind of suck you into what's happening in the movie. The if it's a, if it's a romantic yeah. movie, you have the orchestral stuff playing. If it's an action Chugging movie, you sense. have the yeah. whatever the rock music in the background playing. You know, you think of like the scores for movies like Star Wars and stuff. You know, the music right. is playing behind the big space battles. Yeah. This movie really does kind of put you into this nightclub, yeah. and and kind of make you feel like you're there watching it's Bud and like Sissy do their thing, ride the big bulls. Thing, it's like, yeah, it's like it's like somebody's own like personal playlist or something. Like it's just like the hits from that time. You know, and I was telling you, you know, while we were watching the movie, the soundtrack of this this movie actually was terribly successful. Yeah. It was a huge soundtrack back in the day, and even now it's got a lot of really great songs on it. Yeah. But, uh, you know, along with the music, there are a couple of interesting things about this movie I'd like to point out to people. One of them is that the person who taught John Travolta the two-step when he dances in this movie was Patrick Swayze's mother, Patty, or Patsy, I think her name was, Patsy. Okay. She was actually the choreographer of the film. Wow. Okay. So his mother is the one who actually taught John Travolta to dance. Ironically enough, somebody who had danced around in Greece yeah, just right. a couple of years earlier was being taught learn. the Texas yeah. two-step by Patrick Swayze's mother, of all people. And uh, this was actually one of the first movies that she did as a choreographer. And she had a okay. long career as a choreographer for 20 or so years in that Hollywood. That's why he, he had the moves to him. <laughs> oh, yeah. He was definitely born with it. Now, also, one of the interesting things is this nightclub in Texas that they were at called Gilly's Nightclub was actually a real place, and it actually was the biggest nightclub in the world, according to the Guinness Book of World Records at one point. Wow. That it was a football-sized... Yeah, I mean, like it said, football-sized. It was that's... a football-sized club. Like, it had the surface area of a football field. That's Imagine insane. a nightclub as Indoors. big as a football field. Yeah, yeah. and it, uh, it actually operated up until, I want to say, like the mid or late 90s, and then it closed, and then there was a fire that burned it down, and then the place is uh-huh. gone now. But they, I, I think Mickey Gilly, who you see him in the movie, he, he actually yeah. plays a part of the movie. He's got a cameo as himself. He's actually a very popular country so music artist. So he actually was called Gilly. Yes. Like, okay. Yes, I he actually, know, I that was just, yeah. He actually in real life partnered with somebody else. He used to be called something else. He partnered with him, put his name on it to try to sell it, and it became the biggest okay. nightclub in the world. 
and uh, after it closed down and eventually the structure burned down through whatever happened yeah. and then he actually o- reopened Gillies in Dallas called Gillies Dallas it's much smaller of course yeah but uh, the club does Not still right. operate and Mickey Gilly does still operate and he himself has had a long career as a country music singer did a lot of writing and stuff like that and I think he actually still tours even wow. though he's in his I want to say he's probably like in his 80s mm-hmm. I think he still goes around and does he some stuff like so a older in that movie and that was 40 years ago yeah <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know uh, we had talked a little bit about the scene. We were talking about the mezcal tequila that he that, yeah. that uh, Scott Glenn's character drinks in this movie. We were talking about the worm, and I was reading something just now. There's an interesting scene where he actually plugs the tequila bottle with his tongue, lets the worm float down, and then he sw- eats the Likes worm yeah. and chews it up and stuff like that. That was actually meant as he didn't do it intentionally. It wasn't scripted. He had actually done that just to play a joke. So when they sent the dailies back to wherever they are to get edited and for all the big wigs that greenlight the movies yeah. and watch them to look at them, he did it just to kind of amuse them, and it just actually to, ended yeah. up getting into the movie. Well, he played it off well. <laughs> he did. It, it's it's kind of a weird scene, too, because you, you kind of see in that moment just how, how hardcore that guy really is. Yeah, I mean, just, yeah, like plugging it and, like, letting it fall until the worm comes. Like, that's, yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I know we talked about that tequila. That tequila is no joke. That Monte Alban tequila, yeah. it's like drinking pure battery acid the first couple of shots. It's hard. Like, yeah. And then after you get down to the last couple of shots, by then you don't really care what it tastes like. <laughs> yeah. At that point, it, it but yeah, that, that, the same. that stuff is pretty harsh. But uh, in some casting possibilities, obviously Travolta, while it, you know achieving his stardom at that point, was not the first choice for the role. They actually offered it to Gary Busey, of all people. Oh, really? I know, right? I'm glad they passed. Well, right before or this, passed, I should say. yeah, right before this, he had been nominated for an Oscar for his role as Buddy Holly in the Buddy Holly story. Okay. And so he was a big deal at the time, too. Yeah. So they'd offered to him, and he turned it down to do something else. I forget what. I can't even remember the name of the movie. Probably something that ended up being really obscure. But it ended up going to John Travolta. And I think there were a couple other people that they had thought about having to do it. But ultimately, it was everybody was kind of like, yeah, we kind of like Travolta. He, he, he had already, at that point, had done... Uh, not just Grease, but had done, not Saturday Night Fever, Staying Alive, I think, okay. was the one that he had done. So he was already kind of in that mold of, you know, like the heavy music and the, the dancing and stuff up. like that. Yeah. And, and while granted he's not at all doing that same kind of a role here, it's much more of a straight-up acting role. You yeah. know, he, could, he could carry his own on the dance floor and stuff like oh, that. For so, sure. And who the hell knows? I've never seen Gary Busey dance, and there's yeah. probably a reason for that. So maybe we all dodged a bullet <laughs> with that one, and yeah, we actually got I the right guy in the role for this one. But uh, a couple of the women that were actually in the running to play the role of Sissy was Renee Russo. She actually read for the role. Sure that would have been interesting. Renee Russo, she uh, Thor's mom. Oh, okay. okay. That's Renee yeah, Russo. That's She's been in a lot of stuff. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Michelle Pfeiffer also okay. was in the running for the role, which is interesting. Because I think been, at that point yeah. she had just done Grease 2, which, uh, that movie sucked. <laughs> that one. Maybe but, yeah, nobody remembers yeah. that one and uh, Sissy Spacek actually who several years earlier had just done Coal Miner's Daughter which is the story of Loretta Lynn the country singer yeah so this probably would have been something that would have been right up her alley yeah. and on top of that she shares a first name with the yeah with the, with with the, the character. female lead but uh, yeah overall just a, a kind of a classic 80s thing I mean if you're into if you're into romantic dramas this is good for you so I mean you can sit with your woman and watch this uh, you can if you like country yeah <laughs> And, you know, honestly, a lot of people don't realize, especially younger kids, in Southern California, it really kind of all over the country, the late 70s and early 80s, country exploded onto the scene. So this movie was done not just to kind of show how good the songwriting was back then, yeah. but just how big it was. I mean, Hollywood paid attention to it, that they decided to make a couple of movies about it. There was right. Urban Cowboy and a couple other ones that came out along, you know, in that you know four or five years surrounding it had similar kind of, and you drop something, yep. that had similar kind of, uh, you know, kind of looks to them. They were based yeah. around these country boys or these cowboys that, uh, you know, that tried to make use of the popularity of that. Yeah, it's just just a good movie, and like I said, this, I, I've said a hundred times, I, I love seventies and eighties country because it's well written, and I'm always a bigger yeah. fan of songwriters than I am singers. Yeah, songwriters oh, are the always, ones that make yeah, the songs, I mean, and those songs are so well written. And you know, I was telling you the soundtrack of this blew up; it was yeah. a huge deal, and it's still now a huge deal. I listen to it on YouTube pretty regularly. I'll, you really? know, when I'm driving around the car, I mean, some of these songs are fantastic. Yeah. And you got, and you know, you got people like Bonnie Raitt, who I pointed out to you, who who she had a little bit of a revival in the '90s. Uh, she's kind of like a country blues thing. You've probably heard her songs, you just don't know it. Probably. But she had kind of a revival in the '90s. She's fantastic. She's kind of a Melissa Melissa Etheridge type, kind okay. of a rock country blues yeah. mixture thing. 
and I, I've always loved her. But and then you have Charlie Daniels Band, of course, who was tremendously popular. Devil, Devil came yeah, to Georgia, the whole yeah. thing, and uh, some other stuff. Mickey Gilly, like I said, who's been huge forever. Uh, I think. Uh, uh, who, what thing I'm thinking of? Why am I drawing a blank on the name? The chick. Oh, oh well, I'll figure it out. The, she sang one of the songs in the, in the, in the movie. Oh, okay. I'm drawing a blank. I don't know why, but uh, but yeah, I mean the soundtrack is fantastic from start yeah. to finish. Movie soundtracks, especially from the '80s were phenomenal. I tell yeah. people all the time, like Fast Times, Ridgemont High, things like that. Those yeah, soundtracks are fantastic. Because 80s music was just I'm so good. I'm going to have I mean, yeah, I love 80s music in general, but I've never really sat and listened to like 80s movies soundtracks. So Oh, they were fantastic. Yeah. Nowadays, they're more into scores than they are songs. Way more. The popular yeah. songs that are out used. I mean, some movies do, but they're more about scores. Yeah. Which I can get behind. But, but anyway, so what, uh, what did you think of the movie overall? Uh, I really enjoyed it. I liked... Um, like the back and forth, like how they, you know, they loved each other, but they hated each other. Um, and how that, you know, influenced, you know, the plot of the movie, how they went their separate ways for a while. And then eventually the love came back and they came back together in the end. Um, yeah, like it, it, it's a good, like, uh, feel good movie. Like it just, it has the, the perfect happy ending and yeah, like everything gets wrapped up and yeah. A happy ending, like one that can only be delivered on celluloid. Yeah. Uh, you know, there are some underlying themes about this that I really like, and one of them is about pride. And there's there's yeah. there's not a whole lot of groups of people more prideful than, you know, the cowboy types. Yeah. You know, the tough guys out riding fences, breaking horses, and can't riding be bulls. But, yeah, but, you, you can't yeah. be anything other than tough and hard-nosed and grizzled. And I really, I, one of my favorite parts of the movie, actually, is when he's having that talk with his uncle right before his, you know, his uncle yeah. suffers his fate in the movie about pride and he has that kind of coming to jesus moment where things are kind of put in the right perspective yep. in the way that only your the elder guy in your family can put Could it show you yeah and so that's that's kind of one of the cool things about this movie is it kind of the the underlying lesson is don't be such a prideful asshole if you yeah. don't have to be look at what you have in life it's a good thing maybe you make a couple of sacrifices you're not ready to make and uh, i think it happened for both of them because like right when that happened he like, he didn't, you know, outright say it, of course, but you could kind of tell he was, like, pulling away from Pam. And then the same uh, was true for Sissy pulling away from, from Wes. She was, yeah, not into it anymore, so. Well, you see that neither one of them were into their other relationships. They that once their relationship too, went yeah, on hold, exactly they were just kind of like, man, I'm just here because I don't want to be alone. Yeah. And so, I mean, you obviously, because it's an 80s movie, you see the trajectory coming that they end up coming of back course, together. Were, but yeah. the journey there is the fun part. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, there's a whole lot there about, I mean, obviously, Travolta's character is kind of a chauvinist. He's kind of a pig in the beginning. Yeah. You know, he, he, he slaps his woman around a little bit, not overly beating her up, but all you PC fuckers out there are going yeah. like, to say, oh, he hits his woman. Yeah, well, he, he learns the lesson. He This is one exactly. of the lessons that he learns is that you have to have more respect for the yeah. person that you care about. You have to not be so prideful. You have to make sure that you're playing your part yep. and not trying to control everything. But it's a, it's an awesome movie. Like I said, it's one of my favorite movies from you know the the forty year ago set where you know I still exist yeah. <laughs> at times when it comes to my movies. But uh, yeah, I, I think it's a great movie, and I'm I'm glad you enjoyed it. Like I said, it wasn't the movie yeah. we were planning on doing today, and I was kind of hoping you would like it. I thought you would, but yeah, but it, it, uh, but yeah, I mean it's end. it's one that I was going to do eventually anyway. I just didn't know who I wanted to do it with. I'm glad it was with you because you got to see it for the first yeah. time. And it was a movie that you did enjoy. I greatly enjoyed it. Like I said, it was a movie that I watched with my grandmother a lot when I was a kid. It was one of her favorite movies. So it's got one of those special places for me. But anyway, go down in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, you can find Jake's Twitter handle down in the description below as always. Get a hold of us. Let us know if there's a movie you guys want us to do. And we'll catch you guys later. Say goodbye, Jake. See you guys.